Mr. Wendig, can you give us a quick summary of the second quarter results? Yes, of course. Um, second quarter ended uh, 5.4 billion in sales and about 1.3 in install basement, which is slightly ahead of our guidance. Um, we had a uh, gross margin coming in at 49.1%, which is a bit on the lower end of the guidance, just to do with the increased inflationary effects that we've seen. Uh, net income, 1.4 billion, and uh, very good order intake, uh, uh, 8.5 billion of orders, which is a uh, quarterly record. Now, all in all, um, I think a solid quarter. Um, however, it was not without challenges. Uh, and mainly because of uh, supply chain challenges, uh, supply chain constraints, parts not coming in on time, but we managed the quarter. What's your guidance for the third quarter? Well, like I said, uh, what we saw in the second quarter, which is basically an acceleration of uh, supply chain constraints, is actually also uh, happening in Q3. And I think it will happen throughout uh, the remainder of the year, which will mean that in the Q third quarter, we will see more fast shipments than we planned. And uh, this will also be true uh, throughout the remainder of the year. Now, we have to remind what a fast shipment is. And a fast shipment is, in, in, in fact, a, a way to reduce the cycle time by cutting or, or not doing certain tests in our factory, which could lead up to one month of cycle time reduction. Very important when the customers are waiting for those machines. So we only do those tests at the customer site, and which means the revenue recognition will as a move to that moment in time, which means, yes, we will have more fast shipments, so we'll have more deferred revenue than we anticipated. So when we look at Q3 and look at the guidance of Q3, um, I would say that it's more or less in line uh, with the guidance that we gave for Q2. So it's uh, between 5.1, 5.4 billion of sales, uh, between 49 and 50% uh, margin um, and about 1.4 billion of install base management. So are there then any changes to your view for 2022? Um, well, first of all, 2022, we have to put this into context. Uh, 2022, the demand is still significantly higher than what we can make. So this is uh, the situation that the last quarter and is uh, still the same and we don't see any uh, demand uh, reduction. Uh, but what we do see is what I said earlier is that uh, you know, shipments will be indeed later. So we'll have more fast shipments. So we'll have uh, revenue recognition delayed. Now, we said a quarter ago that uh, the impact of those fast shipments, the, this uh, revenue recognition delay, um, was going to be about 1 billion for this year. Now, where we are today, we think it's going to be 2.8 billion. So we have about 1.8 billion of more revenue recognition uh, delays. And those delays, of course, translate into our 2022 uh, sales number. Yeah, so um, uh, currently we think sales will grow with about 10%, which if you do the math, uh, would come around uh, 20.5 billion for 2022. Now, in summary, if you then look at what we said a quarter ago and where we are today, a quarter ago we said uh, sales going to grow with 20%, which will bring you to 22.3 billion, but with 1 billion of uh, deferred revenue recognition because of fast shipments. Where we are now, we say, well, it's 10% will bring you to 20.5 billion with 2.8 billion of deferred revenue because of uh, fast shipments. So when you look at the business volume or the shipment value, it's effectively these quarters are basically the same. So our guidance from that point of view has not changed. What does it all mean for the different business segments for the year? Well, when you look at uh, EUV, um, uh, we, we're, we're shipping 55 systems. Uh, we, we, we said that before. Um, however, because of those um, uh, fast shipments and the revenue recognition delay, uh, the deferred revenue, um, we are now looking at, uh, which by the way are 15 EUV systems, we are now looking at a revenue, a booked revenue, uh, for EUV um, for 40 systems, which is about uh, 6.4 billion in sales. Now, on deep UV, we see a significant number of uh, deep UV uh, shipments, a significant increase as compared to last year. Uh, but also there, we are seeing the impact of these fast shipments. Um, so we think we'll end up around 8.6 billion in sales for deep UV, which is just over 15% increase as compared to last year, uh, which, by the way, previous quarter we thought it was going to be 20%. And on installed base management, 10% uh, growth as compared to last year, 5.5 billion in total. So add up the 6.4 for EUV, 8.6 for deep UV, 5.5 for installed base management, 20.5 billion 
for 2022, which is about a 10% increase. So we see an increase in delayed revenue. There are concerns around inflation. How does this all impact your gross margin for the year? Yeah, we, we uh, started uh, the year with a gross margin expectation of about 53% and we corrected that in Q1 uh, to, uh, with one percentage point to about 52%, uh, largely because of the unexpected increased inflationary effects. Um, where we are today, we see the following. Of course, uh, most importantly, we are deferring 1.8 billion more of revenue to 2023. It happens to be our higher margin immersion and EUV systems. Now, next to that, we're starting our systems late because of the late delivery of parts, which means that we have fewer systems this year uh, that can cover the fixed cost. Uh, so it's fixed cost coverage. And you have to remember that fixed costs are also going up because we are planning and we, and we are planning and we will ship more systems next year uh, as we see it today. So we need to invest. And last but not least, um, uh, we see uh, inflationary effects. I mean, uh, we've seen an, 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 an acceleration of uh, inflationary pressure on labor, uh, on uh, freight uh, specifically, on parts. Uh, and all in all, if you then look at it, uh, we expect that uh, the gross margin for 2022 will end up between 49 and 50 percent. Now, having said that, uh, of course, we're in discussion today with uh, uh, our ecosystem partners, our suppliers and our customers uh, to, to, to see how we can uh, basically fairly share the burden of, uh, of, of all these cost increases. And you know, looking at it, I think is really when you look at 2022 and, 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 uh, and uh, look at the uh, um, uh, lower guidance on gross margin is driven by these short-term effects. You know, it's uh, inflationary effects that we didn't plan for. It's the um, uh, supply chain challenges that led to uh, deferred uh, revenue. Uh, it's all shorter term. Uh, and of course, we're in discussion uh, with our customers uh, to uh, uh, see how we can fairly share this. But I think longer term, uh, there is no reason whatsoever we see currently to change our ambition for our gross margin targets around 2025, which is between 54 and 56 percent. Let's have a look at the market. What's your current view on the market, both in the, in the near term and the longer term? Yeah, a good question. I think near term, uh, clearly we see uh, a, a, a very mixed uh, uh, messages coming out of the customer base. Um, uh, with respect to consumer-related products, we clearly see, see a, a slowdown, the, particularly in PCs and in smartphones. At the, at the other hand, in the, in, in the industrial space, when you talk about high-performance compute, you talk about automotive, uh, the demand is still very, very strong. And I think it's also evidenced by uh, the um, utilization rates of our machines uh, that are in the installed base, uh, which are at a historical high, uh, and that's still the case today. Um, but we were also seeing um, uh, ac across different semiconductor nodes uh, uh, inventories going up uh, uh, towards, let's say, pre-COVID type levels, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and that's pretty broad based. So uh, all in all, um, yeah, um, uh, it, 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 it's, it's a bit of a mixed picture, uh, uh, shorter term. Longer term, I think there is a, a, a no denying that uh, the, uh, the digital transition that's taking place will continue. Now, and we see it very clearly in automotive, you know, in talking to customers and customers, customers, we see a, a, a quadrupling or a quintupling of uh, the semiconductor content. Mm -hmm. um, uh, lately, our customers are talking about the energy transition. You know, the renewable energy transition, which is uh, very topical these days, will require semiconductors for wind and for solar and for the smart grid. Uh, on top of that, we see the internet of, of everything, everything that we're seeing in terms of sensors and actuators uh, needing semiconductors, it's, it's happening, will not go away. Um, on top of that, uh, more energy efficient, high performance compute, need more transistors. So the die are getting larger. We're needing more extra wafers. Um, the um, uh, uh, geopolitical situation, the technological sovereignty that uh, countries are you know, after is driving these big investment and uh, subsidy programs. And we also uh, think that, uh, if we look at the uh, announcements, the competition in the foundry space will also go up. So all in all, longer term, uh, very healthy and unabated uh, uh, of, you know, views, um, of good and very healthy growth. Shorter term, mixed signals. But what does this all mean for the demand for your products this year and next year? Well, let me first of all say that um, um, when we look at 2022 and 2023, uh, you look at the order intake. 
uh, 8.5 billion of order intake, is, which is, an, uh, is a quarterly historical high. Um, very engaged uh, uh, order discussions with our customers this quarter. Um, we see um, a, a backlog of over 33 billion. So I think that uh, looks very healthy. Um, now, having said that, I think for 2022, uh, we, we are of course not blind for anything that we hear uh, with respect to inflationary pressures, uh, probably res recessionary uh, concerns. So for 2022, I don't think it will have any real effect in terms of our shipments. Uh, for 2023, you really have to ask the question, you know, what kind of recession are you looking at? If it's a moderate recession, I think the impact will be very limited. Uh, for a simple reason that we have such a big backlog uh, that our customers are coming to us and saying, listen, if we see uh, a, a slowdown, sure, well, one thing is certain, we want your machines. And that's logical, those uh, machines are very critical, long uh, lead time. And you have to remember that of our backlog, 85% is for advanced uh, semiconductor manufacturing, high-end immersion and uh, EUV. And of the remaining 15%, Mature technology also needed for uh, for advanced production. So I think all in all, um, pretty uh, healthy. Um, and for 2023, um, you know, if we see the supply chain constraints uh, um, uh, going away by the end of the year, which we're planning for, or even if it's the first uh, part of 2023, um, uh, we will definitely need uh, our capacity that we are planning which is over 60, 60 EUV systems and over 375 deep UV systems. And with this potential risk of a moderate recession, uh, we will need that capacity uh, because our customers tell us. So it's going to be a good and a healthy year. Yeah. So anyhow, strong demand. Do you expect that strong demand to continue beyond 2023? Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I talked about the, the, the big secular trends. Uh, you know, these are the longer term trends and semiconductors are everywhere. And it's also obvious that uh, big societal challenges need uh, big solutions and semiconductors go to the heart of those. So I say yes, uh, uh, semiconductors uh, will grow, semiconductor industry will grow, litho intensity will increase. And, and as a matter of fact, if we look at that, we just uh, are going to just repeat what we said a quarter ago, that we do need structurally more capacity. And as we said, you know, by 2025, we want to have a build capacity for EUV of 90 systems and deep UV of, uh, 300 and of, of uh, uh, 600 systems. And, and, and beyond 2025, we want to build uh, uh, at least uh, 20 high NA systems. I think that is still very much intact and we're working with our uh, suppliers to get it done. Now, clearly um, we will go into some more detail on uh, those capacity numbers and on the drivers for those capacity numbers during our Capital Markets Day, which is on uh, November 11th of this year. Can you give us an update on your plans for the use of cash? Yes, I think um, the future is very bright, so our cash generation will be quite significant. Uh, but first of all, like we've always done, we will use the cash first to run our business. And secondly, then we will pay a dividend, which is going to be an increasing dividend. And by the way, we've decided to uh, move from a semi-annual dividend to a quarterly dividend, by which starting in Q3, uh, an interim dividend for uh, the first time this quarter. Um, and you know, and, and any excess cash we will use for share buy buybacks as we have done in uh, the past. So no change to our policy. How would you all summarize this? Well, if you if you look at at the, the the big picture, you have to really make a distinction between the short term issues and the long term issues. You know, short term, there's no denial that you know there are concerns, there are inflationary concerns, recessionary concerns. As it relates to ASML, we have uh, supply chain constraints that lead to uh, fast shipments and, and, and deferral of uh, you know, revenue recognition. We'll deal with that. Um, but also short term, we look at an order backlog which is very strong. Um, we look at um, a, a customer demand for 2022 and 2023 that is unabated, um, which can withstand any moderate recession uh, in, 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 uh, in our opinion. Um, and then, of course, we have the longer term trends. I think the longer term trends are, like I said earlier, unabated. I mean, it's obvious that the uh, digital transformation will continue and will provide a very, very uh, healthy growth profile for the company going forward with us and with our customers. 
Um, and of course, we'll go into more detail. Yeah, we'll, we'll go into more detail uh, in uh, November, November 11th, I said it before. We will definitely uh, uh, share with our stakeholders and with our investors our views as to the drivers and to the capacity needs for this industry and for ASML specifically. So we're looking forward to that.